نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله النبي الأمين المقين الحنين الكريم الرعوف الرحيم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم Our dear, respectable and honorable Sheikh Mohsin Laban who is present in this gathering joining us in this such a holy and precious occasion of the Mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless him with good health and increase his barakat inshaAllah. Allama Mulana Nazirul Hassan Thanvi Damat Barakatuhum Allama Muhammad Ramzan Qadri President Minhajul Quran Victoria Peace and Integration Forum Mr. Farooq Hussain President Minhajul Quran Australia Dr. Shamsul Arifin Secretary General Minhajul Quran Australia Mr. Ruhil Dalvi, all other respectable, honorable members, executive members of Minhajul Quran Australia, and all the team members who have been participating and spending their precious time organizing this such a beautiful and holy gathering tonight. I congratulate all of you for this such a successful program for the celebration of Mawlid of Rasulullah May Allah bless us with more such opportunities that we organize such more beautiful gatherings to celebrate the joyness of the arrival of Rasulullah in this universe so that we can increase the love for Rasulullah in our hearts and we can transfer that love to our next generations and generations after so that it can continue till the day of judgment where Rasulullah has promised that he will meet his lovers at Hawdul Qawsar. So we pray to Allah that we see our beloved and the beloved of Allah Almighty Muhammad Rasulullah in such a state that our heart is full of love for him, full of love for his family full of love for his companions, full of love for all those pious people who has been spreading the message of Muhammad Rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear audience, Alhamdulillah, once again, Allah Almighty has blessed us with an opportunity that we are celebrating the birthday of Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in our lives. Imam Yusuf bin Ismail Nabhani, a great muhaddis from last century and great Imam 
of Sharia sciences and Sufi of his time, he has extensively discussed and elaborated this matter and he takes the night of Mawlid nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he keeps it higher than the night of Laylatul Qadr. In his opinion, he says that the night of Laylatul Qadr, the Laylatul Qadr, is revered, is great, because in that night, the angels of Allah Almighty are revealed. They come down on earth with the blessings and anwar of Allah Almighty. But, but the night of Mawlid of Rasulullah wasallam is a night when the master of everything, Rasulullah wasallam himself came on this earth. On the night of Laylatul Qadr, Allah blesses human beings by sending Malaika, his creations. But in the night of Mawlid, Allah has blessed the universe by sending the best creation he has ever made in the form of Rasulullah wasallam. And then there is another reason given by Shaykh islam Dr. Muhammad Tahir al-Qadri discussing this aspect that which night is more better and worth valued. He says that a human Muslim, he spends Laylatul Qadr praying for him or herself. So a Muslim celebrates or observes Laylatul Qadr for him or herself only. But a Muslim, he celebrates and observes the Laylatul Mawlidin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the beloved of Allah Almighty. So which one is more better? Which one would be more muqarrab in the sight of Allah Almighty? The night which has been spent for yourself or the night which has been spent for the beloved of Allah Almighty for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So that's why a lot of great Imams and scholars of Islam they have discussed extensively and they have concluded that they take the Laylatul Mawlid in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam much higher than the Layla of Laylatul Qadr. So this was the beginning I wanted to say a few words about the importance of Mawlid in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that why we observe that every year and why we celebrate it in such a grander way because it has been done by Allah Almighty. Dear audience, it is all in a hadith and traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Imam Shaybani has extensively narrated those hadith regarding the melad, the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi in his book. And he has extensively narrated all those events which were faced by Sayyida Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then the after, soon after the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I don't get into the, because my topic is different, I'm getting towards that topic, so I don't get into exactly those narrations, but I will give the summary. That in those ahadith, it has been mentioned how Allah Almighty made the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so special for Rasulullah sallallahu When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was going to be born, Sayyida Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha says that I saw that the idols in, in the country of Sham and elsewhere, they were falling down on the, in the foot. And all those kings sitting in different places, Allah Almighty put a lock on their mouths and they were not able to speak for the whole day. All shayateens were locked. And all sort of these special things Allah Almighty did only for the sake of the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
because Allah Almighty wanted to do some special, something special for the birthday of his beloved Rasulullah So he did so. In your audience, this is a sunnah of Allah Almighty. When he do something good, or when he do something specifically for Rasulullah he wants to engage all of his creations too in that good deed. For example, it is, it is stated in Quran, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ عَامَدُوا سَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا That Allah wanted to send durood and salam on the holy personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he has or he has desired to engage all of his creations, his malaika, even he want all of Mu'mineen, all Muslims to join Allah Almighty in this holy and good deed of sending salam and salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear audience, if Allah can be desirous in this specific element that every single creation joins Allah Almighty while sending durood on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so why wouldn't Allah Almighty would never desire that these creations, my creations, human being and malaika they don't join me in the happiness of the maulid of Allah Almighty maulid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the maulid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was celebrated in a grand manner by Allah Almighty. It's all in a hadith when he was going to be born. In a similar way, Allah Almighty would ask all the people of Iman, the Mu'mineen, the Malaika, and every single element of his creation to join Allah Almighty in this good deed too, in the celebration of the Mawlid of Rasulullah. Dear audience, the verse I have recited as an opening of my lecture tonight, in it, Allah Almighty states that surely a glorious messenger from amongst yourself has come to you. Your sufferings and distress becomes grievously heavy on him. O mankind, he is ardently desirous of your betterment and guidance and he is most deeply clement and merciful to the believers. This is how he has defined his beloved prophet. This is how he has introduced his beloved prophet to the humanity, to the mankind, as an embodiment of peace and mercy. At another place, it has been stated in the Quran, and O esteemed messenger, we have not sent you but as a mercy for all the worlds. This is how Allah Almighty has introduced his beloved Prophet, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he is a complete embodiment, a complete body of peace and mercy and nothing else. That's how he has tried to introduce Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the humanity and mankind. Dear audience, when we define mercy, then what exactly the mercy is, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a mercy to a human or a mankind, what exactly the mercy stands for? Mercy is not just helping people out. Mercy is not just being humble. Mercy is not just being different, but mercy contains every single ingredient of goodness in it. For example, Rasulullah sallam was merciful on slaves. This was act of mercy. Rasulullah sallam was merciful on his wives. That was act of mercy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was merciful on kids. That was act of mercy. Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam was so merciful on animals and birds. That was an act of mercy. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so much merciful for every single creation created by Allah Almighty. That was an act of mercy. So being merciful to every single creation of Allah Almighty was a characteristic of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is not just all. Today we see development on the face of earth. Today we see that these materialistic and scientific developments have easy made our life so much easy today. We see all these technologies, these sciences, these computers, these televisions, media. Every single thing we see which we feel that these things have made our life easy. This is all a mercy of Allah Almighty on us. But through who? Through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we will discuss even all these technological developments. Today the world see even these are the act of mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is all because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being merciful on humanity. That's why even we see all these developments in sciences. Because your audience, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to this universe, to, to the mankind, to the society, to the world, 1400, 1500 years ago. Just try to imagine the scenario of those years and days, how people used to live. There were, there were no rights for women, there were no rights for children, there were no rights for animals, there were no rights, civil rights, or a, there, were no, there was no justice available for the people. There was no sciences, no technology. People used to live like pagans. Like pagans. People used to live like an ignorant people. They, have no, they had no respect for women. They had no respect even for themselves. They used to do tawaf of Kaaba while they were naked. They, were no, they had no respect, no honor for even themselves. That's why they were committing such things, such mistakes, such they were into such ad habits. Rasulullah sallallahu came, he gave the message of Islam, he gave the message of Quran, he introduced the humanity to the new civilization, to the new code of life, to the new code of law, to a new world, a world of development, a world of civilized people, a world of decent people, a world of educated people, a world of humble people, a world of tolerant people. He introduced the humanity to such world which has all those good beautiful characteristics given and sent by Allah Almighty. And that was the message was spreaded by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was merciful to the humanity. That's why he introduced the world to such civilization which was planning to take this world much further towards the easiness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa introduced the humanity to such civilization which had a courage to show the people that there is much decent world than in what you are living today. Your audience, for example, the opening verse of Quran the first verse which was revealed on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Iqra' bismi rabbika allazee khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq We have recited this verse so many times but today we will try to do deep thinking into it. This is the first ever verse revealed on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which Allah, Allah Almighty is actually introducing Himself to His beloved Prophet. And dear audience, Bila Tashbir, Bila Misal, anybody see anyone for the first time, what he or she does, they would come up with the very best of his life to introduce him or herself. For example, if someone is a painter, if he is going to introduce, he will refer to the best painting of his life. 
so that other person could have impression that what this person is about. If someone is a poet, he would refer to the best of his poem he has ever produced. If someone is an author or a novelist, he would mention or refer to, a de to, to that novel which has been very much popularized and which has been given him the big name he will try to introduce himself or herself through that creation. Similarly, Allah Almighty was the first time, Bila Tashbi Bila Misal, he was first trying, trying to introduce himself to his beloved Prophet. And you know what? He did the same thing. He referred to the thing or the creation which is the very best one on which Allah Almighty is proud of. The creation which is a human being. So the first thing Allah Almighty through which he introduced himself to Rasulullah was that he is trying to say my best creation is human being insan insan is my best creation and then he is not ending up here then the first message in which he is introducing himself even in that message he is giving an invitation to the society which is a scientific and logical invitation. He is asking the Rasulullah and through Rasulullah to the humanity, to the mankind that I am the Lord who should be worshipped. But wait, I am a Lord who has been created, who has created human being in a scientific and logical manner. So the first invitation Allah Almighty has sent to the humanity, to the mankind through Rasulullah sallallahu is a message of science, message of logic and nothing else. So dear audience, I am sorry to say those people who try to link themselves with Islam and they try to become a good preacher of Islam and then they say that sciences, the modern technologies the education, all those modern fields people are working today, they have nothing to do with Islam. Islam is all about pre Islam is all about preaching in mosques. If they say that Islam is all about reciting Quran, Islam is all about learning about the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or if they say Islam is all about practicing the ibadat and nothing else and Islam and sciences and technologies and education has nothing to do with Islam. So this is not the message of Islam. This is not the message of Quran. This is not what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi would have ever desired. Because the first thing Allah Almighty, the first invitation Allah Almighty is sending to the humanity through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is about science and technology. And that become the base for that such a great civilization which survived for thousand years in this world. And people talk today, the historians they say, the Spain, Hispania, it was great in the time of Muslim rule. And those golden days which Spain saw during the days of Muslim rule, could have never seen back again even till today. The Baghdad, Granada, Cordova, all these Muslim intellectual great seats were there. From where they got their basis? They got their basis from this verse. They got their basis from the preachings and message of Rasulullah sallallahu Because Rasulullah sallallahu was not a prophet of an isolated religion. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a prophet or a narrow, no, was not a prophet of a narrow minded followers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never a preacher of a narrow minded Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never a spreader of a narrow minded message. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never a spreader of hatred. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never a spreader of ignorance but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the message of knowledge 
gave the message of education, gave the message of science, gave the message of technology, gave the message of logic, gave the message of thinking logically. Because that's what Quran has through communicated through Rasulullah So giving such message to the humanity, this was uh, this was being merciful on humanity. Otherwise, this world would have remained in the darks. Otherwise, this world would have remained in ignorance. Otherwise, this world would have remained in all those dark ages. Dear audience, it's not just a very old story, only 300 years ago. Even in the great cities like London, there was no concept of hygiene. Human being and animal, they used to sleep in the same room. There was no concept of the, the toilets and washrooms in the houses. People used to go out in the fields. Dear audience, cities like Paris, there were no sewerage system in those days. Cities, cities other like in Europe, these are the best you see, the, the most developed countries today. So just 250 or 300 years ago, they didn't have that concept. But 1000 years ago, Muslims, the Muslim Spain, the Baghdad, they had a complete sewerage system, water supply system. In Baghdad, every single house used to get a fresh water from the streams. That's how the architecture was designed. The sewerage system was so perfect 1,000 years ago that nobody can give the example of that system. You can repeat it today. Even in those days, every single house used to have toilets. This is talk talking about 1,000 years ago. What was all that? This was the mercy of Rasulullah Wasallam. He gave such a great vision to his companions so that those companions could lead towards such a great civilization which could survive for thousands and thousands of years. Dear audience, here I would like to narrate one tradition of Rasulullah It has been narrated by Imam, Imam Hakim in Mustadra. Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala has reported that Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that in very near future, during the last period of my ummah in humanity, people will travel by other means of transport. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is speaking about 1,400 years ago. He is talking about today. We can imagine everybody is traveling in a cars, but I am talking about those days when people never had anything in their mind except traveling on horses, donkeys, and camels. In those days, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi is there is two aspects. One aspect is linked towards ilmul ghaib of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's how he is expressing. But I would take it that actually Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by mentioning all these things, he was giving a vision to his companions that this is the technological development where you have to lead Muslims. It wasn't just about ilmul ghaib. But actually he was giving the vision to the society that you don't have to stick with these animals of bones and flesh, but you have to develop further towards till that stage where you are traveling on planes, cars and other vehicles. So it has been said <coughs> that people will travel by other means of transport, motor cars instead of animals of flesh and bones would be used. They will stop riding the animals of flesh and bones and they will start other vehicles for traveling. You know that, that time people, they were so ignorant, they would have never imagined that thing. But Rasulullah sallallahu set a finishing line for them. That before the resurrection day, the technology has to reach up to that level. In other hadith and tradition of Rasulullah one companion of Rasulullah said that during that Rasulullah said during the last period of humanity knowledge will spread to each and every house. Now he is talking about computers and televisions. He said 
during the last time of my Ummah. The knowledge will spread to each and every house while sitting in their houses would get knowledge on the screens. He talked of TVs and informed us about the computers and screens. The electronic media, he said, knowledge would reach every man and woman on the face of the earth and workers and their masters and old and young, every single human being will get knowledge. And then he spoke of a scientific progress regarding information technology. He spoke of a spy software 1400 years ago. Then he spoke of a surveillance equipment 1400 years ago. He spoke of a counter surveillance system 1400 years ago. He spoke of a scrambling devices and security devices and gadgets 1400 years ago. And all other mechanical and electronic development which we are enjoying today, 15, 14, 1500 years after. He spoke about these things 14, 1500 years ago. So that was his vision, which was he actually he was trying to transfer to his companions, the, next, the leaders of next generation, so that they can take this vision and lead towards the greatest civilization man could ever see on the face of earth. And people saw that, that Muslims, when they were ruling the world for 1000, they came up, they came up with the astronomical sciences, they came up with the medical sciences, they came up with the surgical sciences, they came up with the concept of hospitals, they came up with the concept of eye surgery, they came up with the concept of hygiene and hygienic factors, they came up with uh, all those scientific developments, the mathematical formula, equations, you see all these developments today. The foundations were laid by the Muslim scholars thousand years ago. The foundations were laid by the great companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago. The foundations were laid by the vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago. And this, if this is not the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on human and mankind, then what else is mercy? If this vision which was given by Rasulullah sallallahu is not a mercy, then what else is mercy? So every single human being and Muslim especially, they have to be thankful to Allah Almighty and Rasulullah sallallahu for all these mercies. He has been showering on the lovers. He has been showering on humanity. He has been showering on a mankind. He has been showering on every single living creature on the face of earth. Dear audience, here I would like to now refer to a couple of traditions and hadiths of Rasulullah which will show how merciful Rasulullah was to every single sect of the society. That makes us proud. That makes us feel that we belong to such religion. We belong to such faith. We belong to such civilization. Who was such high in morals. Who was such high in education. Who was such high in traditions. And today, when every year the birthday of Rasulullah comes back, it comes to us with a message, with a reminder, with tazkir, reminder, reminding us of the message of Rasulullah the message of openness, the message of development, the message of the love, the message of tolerance, the message of education, the message of development and advancements. Your audience, before I get on those traditions, there is one another popular hadith of Rasulullah in which he mentioned that acquiring knowledge, learning in education, educating yourself is compulsory on every single man and woman. And then he further states that acquire knowledge even if you have to go to China or even if you have to travel all the way to China, acquire knowledge. 
learn and educate yourself. Your audience, going back to the same point, if it was just about acquiring the Islamic and Sharia education, my question is, these both aspects have been covered in one hadith. It is not two different hadiths. In which, in one hadith, Rasulullah first stated that acquiring knowledge is compulsory on every man and woman. And in then in the same hadith, the second part, he is saying, acquire knowledge, even if you have to travel to China all the way. So my question is, if Rasulullah was only inviting the mankind towards the Islamic education and not about the secular and scientific education, then then where else Muslim could have got best Sharia education other than Medina and other than the Sohbah of Rasulullah Why Rasulullah is asking his companions to acquire knowledge even if you have to go to China? What kind of Sharia and religious education in those days it was available in China? The China was only popular for his scientific developments. China was only popular in those days in, the, in their astronomical and mathematical developments. China was a great civilization. It was called a road to a gold. And it was called a golden road. It was a very wealthy, wealthy civilization. They were advanced in finances. They were advanced in wealth. They were advanced in their economies. So Rasulullah of course the Islamic and Sharia education is necessary for every Muslim, man and woman. But here Rasulullah is giving the general message, acquire knowledge, acquire Islamic knowledge, acquire scientific knowledge, acquire all sciences which you find today so that a human being, a Muslim can live a balanced life in this world. He has enough knowledge about Sharia sciences. He has or she has enough knowledge about the Sunnah of Rasulullah And then he has enough scientific knowledge so that he can or she can live respectably and honorably on the face of the earth representing the Muslim community and society. The audience coming back to the point how Rasulullah was so merciful towards different sects and uh, different groups of the society and community. It is stated and narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, He says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الناس إنما أنا رحمة مهدا According to Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the messenger of Allah said, O people, I am only a mercy gifted to you. Rasulullah himself trying to introduce that I am just mercy and nothing else. I am mercy for everyone. Dear audience, the followers, the true followers of Rasulullah when Rasulullah is saying I am a mercy to every single element of the society and nothing else. How can a follower of such a merciful prophet be a killer? How can a follower of such a merciful prophet be, be having a hatred in their hearts, a fighter, a fitna in the society, a killer, a terrorist or extremist. If we are a real and true followers of Rasulullah so these are the values which we have to adopt which I am trying to mention today. At another place, it is also again narrated by Sayyid Rabu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala who he states, the Prophet said, there is not a single believer that I, uh, he says that I am closer to him than his own self in the world and hereafter. Recite if you wish, the Prophet is closer to the believer than their own selves. So whenever a believer dies, it's a very important point, whenever a believer dies, and leaves wealth behind, then let it be inherited by his family. And whoever they may be, and whoever leaves behind a debt or destitute dependence, let him come to me, for I am his master. How merciful Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was. He said that if anybody leaves wealth after him, that wealth should go to his family. But if anybody leaves death, 
that person should come to me. I am responsible. I will pay his debt. This is the love Rasulullah had for every single human being in the world. This is something which should be adopted by the Muslim governments today. This is something which should be adopted by the rulers of Muslims who are Muslim world today. This is something which should be adopted by every person in power. Because this is what Islam is. Helping society, a welfare society, a beautiful helping and charity, doing a charity towards society. This is what the society Rasulullah wanted to give and he spoke about. Again, there is another companion, Abu Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrates that once a man said, O Messenger of Allah, I come late to the morning prayer because so and so an Imam who has a standing for a long time upon hearing this, the Messenger of Allah became angry and I never saw him getting angrier at any other instant than that day. And he said, O oh people, indeed there are people among you who drive others away. So whoever leads the people in prayer, let him lighten it, for behind him are the weak, the elders and those who need these. So this was the concept which was driven from Quran like Rafid Deen, there is no compulsion in the religion. Be softened on people, be helpful to the people. Even in prayer, Rasulullah is trying to propagate this message that even if you feel those weak people, old people, elder people, the children, they are standing behind you, lighten the prayer, recite the short, short surah, so that you don't become the reason to drive people away from the beauty of the religion of Islam. You don't become the reason to drive people away from the message of Rasulullah But unfortunately, our behavior is different than the preaching of Rasulullah today. It is not just putting compulsion on people. It is not just putting difficulties on people. Here, some Muslim scholars and preachers of Islam they are not just spreading the hatred among the Muslims, but they are dividing people into communities. They have made different groups and sects and societies in the people, in the Muslim community, preaching this and that. One people go to one, one person goes to one mosque, this listens a different message, goes to other mosque, listens a different message. This is nothing but driving people from the message of Islam. This is nothing but driving people away from the true message and true spirit of Islam, they get fed up, especially the next generation. When they see such division in Islam, they get fed up. They decide not to go anywhere. They go to one place. They listen that people is that most people are wrong. Don't go to them. They go to the different mosque. They tell them those people are wrong, don't go to them. The youngster, they finally decide, okay, let's not go anywhere. So this is where Rasulullah is pointing us out. That don't become a reason to drive people away from the message of Islam. If you cannot prove to be a good for religion, don't ever try to prove yourself to be bad for the religion. So dear audience, <coughs> then Rasulullah was so merciful on the women folk as Sayyid Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri who has narrated he said the woman said to Prophet O Rasulullah the men have greater excess and more time with you than we have appoint for us a day with you exclusively so he promised to meet them at an appointed time in which he would exhort them and command them. And then there are people today, unfortunately, they avoid inviting women in their religious programs. And here Rasulullah is exclusively giving more time to the women because the woman is a mother of next generation. As 
a popular saying of Napoleon, he said, you give me good mothers, I give you a great nation. This was the vision of Rasulullah By giving more time to preach women, when they get better, when they get higher and higher in their values of Islam, they would be able to train their kids in a better way. That's why it is propagated by Minhajul Quran and Shaykhul Islam, Dr. Tahirul Qadir, that always whenever you hold such beautiful gatherings related to Islam, religion, don't worry about the space and stuff. Try to invite the women in those gatherings too. Because the more chance they will get to learn about Islam, the more good mothers they will prove to be to their kids. So dear audience, at another place, it has been narrated by Sayyidina Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, while talking about the women right, she says that Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever beat any of his wives or servants in his life. He would always respect his wives and servants according to Sunan Abu Dawood, Kitab al Nikah. Nikah. Hadith number 2144. The companions asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, what do you say or what is your commandment regarding our women? He said they should be provided with the same domestic rights as you are enjoying and nobody is allowed to beat them and nobody is allowed to disgrace any woman. So disgracing women is totally banned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it is banned in Islam. And then he says they deserve equal grace, equal respect, equal honor, equality in your domestic life, in your spiritual life, in your religious life, even in your economic life and social life. They have a right to enjoy equality in the society and not just oppressing them and keeping them in the houses and treating them as a servant or a different race or community. So dear audience, this is the responsibility of Rasulullah sallallahu towards the women folk. This is the way Rasulullah sallallahu wanted to give in those days. O oh, Muslims, dear brother and sister, I would ask those people who try to say or they say that they are a true followers of Rasulullah sallallahu but then they don't hate beating their women. They don't hate disrespecting women in the society. They don't hate saying no to the rights of women in this society. What kind of followers are they? Rasulullah is propagating this message. Give equal right to your women. Give respect to your wife. Give respect to the women folk in the society. Give respect to them. Treat them like equals. They have an equal right in the society. They have an equal economic right. They have an equal social right. They have an equal educational right. But today, people coming from Indo-Pak, some continent, and especially from those backgrounds, they spend more on the education of their boys than their girls. And then those extremist people who has been bombing and destroying the schools related to girls in Pakistan and different areas in South Asia. What kind of followers are they of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I cannot understand what religion they follow. I cannot understand what prophet actually they are following. Their Islam can be of anywhere but not from Medina and not from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is preaching the respect of women in the society. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving more opportunity to women to learn and not saying no to the opportunities and right of learning to the women. This was the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards the women folk. Dear audience, then further talking about the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we see another tradition and hadith of Rasulullah which shows 
How much Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was merciful towards the infants and kids of the society. It has been narrated by Sayyidina Sayyida Aisha Sadiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha, Ummul Mu'mineen. She said, once a group of Bedouins, the villagers, Arab villagers, they went to see the messenger of Allah, very beautiful hadith. They asked, do you kiss your children? The Bedouins, they asked the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you kiss your children? The companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. The Bedouins said, by Allah, as for us, we do not kiss our children. Upon hearing this from Bedouins, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what can I do if Allah has removed mercy from your hearts? This was the love passion and mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards the infants and kids. In other hadith narrated by Sayyid Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, I begin the prayer and wish to lengthen it, but hear, it, hear the crying of a young child, and so I shorten my prayer. For I know the severe distress the mother feels due to his crying because they are women too used to come to the mosque to offer prayers. This was the softness of the heart of Rasulullah Allah, how merciful the heart of Rasulullah was. Even he used to care about those kids crying during the prayer. This was the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was there not to put anyone in trouble. He was there not to put anyone in stress. He was there and he is here not to put anyone in compulsion and difficulty. How come today the followers of such a merciful prophet have become so difficult? How come? The preachers of the message coming from such prophet, those preachers have become so difficult on humanity. How come their religion has become so difficult, so compulsive, so stressful? The religion introduced by Rasulullah, the religion sent by Allah Almighty and spread by Rasulullah was never like that. It was about mercy, it was about love, it was about peace, it was about harmony. Dear audience, there is another hadith related to the mercy of Rasulullah on servants and slaves. Abu Masood al Badari who said, I was gaining a servant boy of mine when I heard a voice behind me saying, You should know, o Abu Masood. But I could not recognize the voice due to my anger. When he came closer to me, lo and behold, it was the messenger of Allah. He said, you should know, o Abu Masood. You should know. You should know, Abu Masood. So I dropped the cane from my hand and he said, you should know, o Abu Masood, that Allah has more power over you than you do over this servant. Upon hearing this, I said, I shall never strike a slave again after him. And then he, it is further mentioned by Hazrat Abu Masood radiallahu ta'ala, and he says, I said, O Messenger of Allah, he is free from, he is free for the sake of Allah, who is most high. He said, had you not freed him, the fire would have certainly stuck to you or engulfed you. So this was, the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi towards the servant. At another point, once companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi came to Rasulullah and asked, "Oh Lord, Prophet, how many times we should we should forgive our servant in a day? If a servant commits a mistake, at least how many times we should forgive our servant?" Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi remained quiet. Then second time again, the companion asked Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi 
How many times we should forgive our servant? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Forgive your servant seventy times." This was mercy. Means never get angry on your servant. Never get angry on your servant. Be merciful. Be humble. Be loving. Be caring. If anybody commits a mistake, don't be angry on him. You do the right thing in front of his or her eye. The person will correct him or herself. Be merciful. This was the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam given. Dear audience, that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It wasn't just about the human being, but the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so merciful on animals too. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This hadith has been narrated by Abdullah bin Jafar radhiyallahu taala. And he says. That once Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered a walled compound belonging to one of the Ansar, and lo and behold, he saw a camel. When the camel saw a Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it moaned and its eyes watered. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to it and rubbed its head, and it quieted down. He asked, "Who is the master of this camel? To whom does it belong?" A young man from Ansar came and said, "O Messenger of Allah, it belongs to me." The Prophet said, "Will you not fear Allah regarding this animal that Allah has given you?" The camel complained to me that you starve it and burden it beyond its capacity. This was the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam towards the animal. There are dozens of hadiths you will find in the books of hadiths narrated by the different companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, discussing the merciful aspects of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How merciful he was! How merciful he was to the every sect of community and society. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam is not. A faith or religion, but Islam is a civilization. Islam does not stand for discrimination of race and color. Islam does not stand for economic perversion and its exploitation. Islam stands for alleviation of poverty. Poverty. Islam stands to eliminate the hunger from the society. Islam stands to eliminate the homelessness from society. Islam stands for the status of women. Islam stands for justice in the society. Even Islam stands for the for elimination of the environmental pollution from this world. Islam stands for environmental protection, ecological health of this world and society. The Holy Quran. You cannot. As Holy Quran states about alleviation of the poverty, this is the message of Islam. Allah says, "You cannot achieve the act of righteousness unless you spend your wealth as a charity to alleviate poverty, poverty from the society." It commands, "Feed a hungry person to eliminate hunger from his life." Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "He is not a believer who eats to his fill." and his neighbor remains hungry the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the concept of social and economic support and justice in the society he said of sharing resources in the society prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the concept of social equality in the society as he stated narrated hadith narrated By a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Food of one person in my ummah would be sufficient to two people. Food of two people in my ummah would be sufficient to four people. Food of four people in my ummah would be sufficient to eight people." So actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is giving a vision of a welfare society where you are sharing resources. Where you are going against capitalistic society, where you are going against the monopolistic society, you are distributing the shares equally and among equal to the people, to the countries of the world, to the people of the world, to the different sex group, creed, and caste of the world. Instead of acquiring and gathering all sources in one hand, 
resources in our hands. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is here giving the concept of equality. Is here giving the concept of social justice. Is here giving the concept of economic justice. Here giving the concept of economic, social, and different right. Giving the concept of rights for the society, right for the women, right for the kids, right for the animals. This is what the concept given by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear audience, unfortunately, today we find ourselves much away from the message and from the true vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, the acts of few criminals against humanity may be wrongly in the name of Islam, having absolute no link or concern or relationship with Islam. But they have been giving a bad name to Islam. To the 99, Sheikh Islam, Dr. Muhammad Ayyub Ali has stated, 99% peace and peace loving Muslims. So those couple of extremists who are not representing the true Islam, who are not representing the message of Rasulullah who are not actually representing the Islam coming up from Medina. They are couple of them, but giving a bad name to the society. So dear audience, today we have to stand up. We have to join our hands together to get rid of this bad image. We all have to stand up. This is a call by Minhajul Quran. This is a call of Shaykh Islam, Dr. Tahirul Qadri. That we all have to come together and join hands together to get rid of this problem. To clean the dust which is on the face of Islam today. The dust of terrorism, the dust of extremism, the dust of misunderstanding, the dust of narrow-mindedness, the dust of radicalism. We have to clean that dust from the face of Islam altogether. No single group, no single organization, no single sect of the society and community could do it alone. We all have to do it. We all are the lovers of peace. We all are the lovers of harmony. We all are the lovers of the true message coming from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all are the lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all are the lovers of Islam. We all wanted to be call ourselves true Muslims. Then this is the time to put our efforts together against cruelty, against terrorism against extremism, against the killers of morality, against the killer of innocence, against the killers of education, against the killers of, killers of society, against the killers of morality, against the killers of women respect, against the killers of rights. Dear audience, today the world is living in the darkness of future, unfortunately, living without security of peace, and their life, human life, has been deprived of its scaredness. To these people I mean, these extremists, the terrorists, the killers of mankind, human life is expendable and of no value to them. They see it as their God-given right to kill and eliminate those innocent, innocent people from the face of earth. Terrorism has removed smiles from the faces of millions of innocent people today in the society. Where one we used to see happiness, there is now only pain and sorrow on the faces of humanity. Hearts have begun, become full of hatred. Rasulullah sallallahu when he came, he filled our hearts with love. He filled our hearts with respect. Then who made our hearts like this? Why we are hating each other? Why we have that much hatred in our hearts for each other? For our brother Muslim and sister. For other different brothers from different religions and different society. Why we have that much hatred? Why we cannot understand and respect each other tradition and each other culture? Why, could, why we cannot have an open heart? Accepting everyone's tradition. Respecting them. Do your own way. Act the way you like, but at least respect others' tradition. Don't abuse them. 
This was the message of Islam. Dear audience, this is now this effort has been launched two years ago by Sheikh Ul Islam, Dr. Tahir Qadri, when he gave a 600 pages extensive and popular fatwa which is available on the stall too I have just seen. So please take it with you. A popular fatwa which actually described how peaceful Islam is and terrorist killers, they have nothing to do with Islam or the message of Rasulullah. So this effort is continuing for last two years and actually Minhaj Quran has been doing these efforts for last 30 years. Because the Hajj Quran was made by Sheikh Ul Islam for the message of love, for the message of education, for the message of peace, for the message of knowledge. Spreading love, eliminating the hatred, respecting each other, honoring each other, understanding each other's traditions, understanding each other's culture. This was the message of Sheikh Ul Islam. And the Hajj Quran has been working on it for last 30 years. And for the last two years, aggressively continuing on these lines, spreading the message of love through seminars, conferences, Al Hidayah camps in UK, different seminars and conferences in UK, America, Canada, Australia. Last year, Sheikh Ul Islam was here. You had a chance to see him and listen to him. So it was. It has been continuing that. Where inshallah, it will you continue for further years until we achieve the objective of ultimate peace in this society. Ultimate, uh, unless we achieve the objective of love in this society. As I always say, that tolerance or preaching tolerance is not the solution to the problems of the society. The word or the solution or prescription I would suggest is love. That is the solution to the hatred. Because when you say, I, I am trying to tolerate someone, it still has a smell of hatred in it. That I don't like that person, but for some reason I am tolerating that person. Which means you would never be able to get along with him. So, but once you spread the message of love, that eliminates all hatred, the fragrances and smells from the life. I am ending my speech with the conclusive message of peace in the words of Sheikh Al Islam, Dr. Muhammad Tahir Al Qadri. He says, I want that we see and accept this religious and cultural diversity and cultivate freedom of faith, freedom of thought, freedom of culture, expression and choice. We can convert this whole phenomena into a beauty. We can see a beauty in diversity and the unity of mankind can emerge in a very beautiful form of human diversities. We want to develop a culture of dialogue. We want to respect for our differences. We want resolution of disputes through peaceful means, through understanding each other and through bringing people close to each other. We need to build a new world. We need to build a new world in which peace, love, happiness, tranquility, security, trust, compassion, kindness, mercy, solidarity, and mutual respect will prevail over fear, hatred, and disease. Thank you very much. In the end, I pray to Allah Almighty that may Allah accept efforts all the efforts done by all organizations around the world, efforts to spread peace and love in the society and to eliminate hatred. And may Allah bless us with Rahmah, with the love of Rasulullah wasallam, so that that love could become a wasila for us in this world and hereafter. Wassalam wa ma'alayna illa al